Hey YouTube, how you guys doing? This is Silver Husky. Wanted to bring you guys a new video today about a 3D printer. As you guys may have seen, uh, I've been printing a bunch of stuff. My daughter and I have been really whipping up some really cool stuff. This one right here is a uh, is a Boba Fett helmet. And I was so impressed with the quality and how it came out that I wanted to buy my own 3D printer so I didn't have to hog up all of my uh, my daughter's printer time. So uh, I went ahead and got the CR10 Max, which is the same version as hers, but much larger, right? Like they say, go big or go home, right? So here it is. This is the CR10 Max. And this is basically a fresh unboxing and setup. And uh, I'm going to give you guys an honest review so far. Uh, key features about this machine. Uh, one, it is bigger. It's bigger. It's better. In my review, would say that it is bigger, but it is not by any means better. So let's take a look at some of the key features. Uh, no, we do not want to continue this print. <laughs> I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's start with the price point. The uh, the cost of the CR10 is about two seventy five, whereas the CR10 Max is a lot closer to a thousand dollars. And one of the key features on this device and one of the biggest selling points is that it has what's called an automatic bed leveling, right? So they have this little device called the BL Touch. I'm going to zoom in on it right here so you can see. See that little red light there on the left? It's actually a probe. And that probe comes down just like it just did. And it senses where the bed is. And as soon as it senses the bed, it will trigger and pop up so it knows not to go any further down it does it a second time at a much slower rate so it can identify exactly where the bed is and so it knows not to go any lower or too much higher than that for the nozzle so in theory it ends up mapping out a grid of exactly where all of the level points are for the whole bed now as far as upgrades from the previous model it has two belts right and a two rail system and that two rail system actually makes this bed more level in other words, the print is less likely to have uneven print lines as it goes further and further up the Z-axis. Second to that is the sheer size of this thing. Look at this huge Z-axis, 470 millimeters by 450 by 450 in the X and Y. Additionally, it has stabilizer bars that go up to the top of the Z-axis to prevent it from rocking. So as fantastic as those features seem, and of course they were huge selling points, my big issue is when I opened the box up and I pieced everything together, which by the way took about two and a half hours, what I ended up with was something that was much less desirable. Both my X and my Y axis limit sensors were faulty. And it actually wasn't the, the device itself that was faulty, it was a wire that came loose inside of the box, which... Who thinks to check for that, right? Everything should come assembled and it should come the right way. But what those little faulty wires did was it caused this wheel to continue spinning even after it reached its limit, creating a grinding noise where this belt was just rubbing against that little wheel back there. And this wasn't the only one that did it. The other solenoid on the top uh, for the x-axis was doing the exact same thing. It's causing that issue when it would bottom out, it would keep pulling and grinding, wearing down the belt. So I sent them an email and they told me that I needed to flash the firmware for the machine using this firmware tutorial. Now, come to find out, the firmware wasn't even available on the thumb drive that they sent me. So I had to find it somewhere on the internet. Uh, what? Yep, I'm definitely not a computer guy, but they wanted me to go in there and upload this new firmware somehow anyway. So I had to find the driver for the printer and then I had to find the firmware on the internet and then I had to find a way to connect all of this together and make it work. That took about four days, believe it or not, because I couldn't find the programs anywhere. And the icing on the cake for this email is that they also wanted me to take out the limit switches and test them uh, with a multimeter and swap them out and see if they work in different positions. Yeah, never done that before either. But the silver lining was that if it was faulty, they were going to send me new limit switches. So, hey, there's something good on your creality. You might not send me a perfect machine in the first place, but at least you're willing to send me the parts to fix it later on my own. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention, after about four days, I finally got them to send me the driver for this printer. Yeah, that file doesn't look sketchy at all. Let me go ahead and click on this. Believe it or not, I also needed a driver for that stupid cable. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? So, I finally got everything back together where it needs to be. All the cables plugged in, everything was testing fine. Uh, I got the bed to level and the little probe was working with all the sensors and lights and everything, and it turned on beautifully and everything looked great. And as my good friend Heist would say, and then this happened. 
Right as I was getting ready to print my very first test print, the nozzle dug into the print bed and ate it to pieces. So I guess I'm not going to be printing on this one. I just submitted a formal request for a, uh, a return label and a reimbursement. Uh, I, I want my money back. I'm going to find a different company. Creality, I don't think they're terrible, but I think that when you get a lemon, there's no fixing it. It's just trash. Uh, so I got a lemon and I've seen other reviews of the CR10 Max coming out with lemons. So I'm going to try a different, uh, different company altogether. If you guys have any recommendations or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And again, it's not meant to really jab at Creality. I know they have some good quality products. It's just, I'm not really pleased with the way this one turned out for a thousand bucks. This thing should be plug and play. I should be able to drop this thing right into the, you know, plug it into the outlet, drop in a file and print and it goes right. Thousand bucks. That's supposed to be a pretty solid, solid investment for a printer right there. Uh, not happy with it, but hey, who knows? Maybe next time. But thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and leave your comments below. Thanks for watching.